Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Samar Arjawi. The Royal Court has announced that President Alexander Vucic of the Friendly Republic of Serbia will arrive today on a friendly visit to Bahrain. During the visit, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa will hold talks with the Serbian President on the solid Bahraini Serbian relations as well as the latest regional and global developments. The Royal Court wishes the Kingdom's distinguished guest and his accompanying delegation a pleasant stay in the Kingdom. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fawziya Zainal, May has described that the human rights system in Bahrain is developed and advanced and that the Kingdom's civilized initiatives pioneers. In a statement, Zainal expressed the Council's strong rejection and objection to the European Parliament's resolution concerning the human rights situation in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Speaker said that the European Parliament has been taking biased stances and decisions against Bahrain, relying predominantly on subjective sources that steer an agenda which seeks to undermine the Kingdom and fuel terrorism incitement and bigotry among the peaceful, pluralistic community of Bahrain. She affirmed the significant advancement and strides taken in the Kingdom to uphold and protect human rights under the directive of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the relentless efforts of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. She added that the Council has extended official invitations to the European Parliament to visit the Kingdom of Bahrain as well as invited its members to communicate with the official concerned authorities and with the Bahraini Parliament, which has been elected freely by the people as well as the, with human rights organizations in the Kingdom, including the National Institute for Human Rights. She added that those stances and positions do not serve the mutual interests of these countries and peoples and do not play a constructive role in advancing human rights. She highlighted advancement of the regulatory system in Bahrain and the responsible care extended to inmates and all the legal guarantees provided to them under the Bahrain judicial system in accordance with the Constitution. The Shura Council strongly condemned the European Parliament's flawed report on human rights situation in Bahrain, which contained misinformation and false facts. The Shura Council said, the report is written in a unilateral view, lacking objectivity and professionalism, and did not follow the basic framework of parliamentary work. The Shura Council rejected the interference of the European Parliament in the internal affairs of the Kingdom and the deliberate falsification of facts which portrays Bahrain in an offensive and reprehensible manner. The Shura Council added that the report constitutes a clear violation of the international treaties and conventions and a clear circumvention of parliamentary norms. It expressed strong dissatisfaction with the European Parliament's discussion of these resolutions that contain lies and irrelevant information that is not based on any evidence, but rather provocative opinions and that hold suspicious political agendas in order to discredit Bahrain's reputation. The Council noted that the resolution approved by the European Parliament overlooked all the bright aspects of human rights in Bahrain and the multiple situations in which Bahrain has proved to accelerate and pioneer in the fields of protecting human rights. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs also expressed its deep condemnation of the resolution issued by the European Parliament on human rights in the Kingdom of Bahrain, which included false allegations and fallacies based on dishonest sources seeking to harm the Kingdom's reputation. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed its surprise at how the report resolution was issued without communicating with the elected parliamentary institution and the competent authorities in Bahrain to verify the validity of such false accusations. The Ministry pointed out that the resolution touches on issues that affect the identity and values of Bahrain's society, which is an unacceptable transgression and interference in the internal affairs of the Kingdom. The Minister also expressed its deep regret that the resolution blatantly overlooked the progress made by Bahrain in the field of protecting and promoting human rights and ensuring basic freedoms, but instead focused only on limited cases without investigating them accurately. The Ministry added that the report resolution also failed to convey the full picture of the development of human rights in the Kingdom in its various aspects, contradicting the principles and rules of parliamentary work. The Minister of Foreign Affairs stressed that respect for human rights and freedoms is an essential national pillar and that the Kingdom adopts a proactive and preventative approach regarding any possible allegations of individual cases affecting human rights. It further stressed that the Kingdom is continuously working to enhance the ability to respond to such cases in accordance with the Constitution, laws and norms. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs affirmed that the Kingdom welcomes all concerned international bodies 
to view its human rights record programs and advanced initiatives in this regard, especially that the kingdom has achieved many human rights gains worthy of praise in light of its open and tolerant society that guarantees all its members the enjoyment of all rights and freedoms. The Minister of Health, Faika bint Saeed al Saleh, received this morning a shipment of 300,000 doses of the anti coronavirus vaccine Sinopharm in the presence of the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China in the Kingdom of Bahrain, Anwar Habiballah, which was transported from the People's Republic of China on board Gulf Air, the official carrier of the Kingdom of Bahrain. The minister indicated that the shipment of the coronavirus vaccine, which is produced by the Chinese National Group of Drugs, Sinopharma, is the largest shipment of vaccines in the history of the Kingdom of Bahrain as part of the provision of the largest sufficient number of vaccines in order to continue the process of strengthening health security through vaccination of citizens and residents. The minister affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain will continue its efforts to combat the coronavirus in order to preserve the health and safety of its citizens indicating that it has always been one of the first countries to enhance its health security at various levels. The minister continued to state that this comes in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, who directed to provide the antivirus vaccination and make it available free of charge to all the citizens and residents in a manner that preserves health and safety of all. In addition to the close follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa, in the efforts to achieve further success for all the action plans in the face of the coronavirus. The health minister indicated that providing vaccination enhances health security plans in the face of the coronavirus as this humanitarian step comes to complement various initiatives implemented by Bahrain under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister in eradicating COVID-19. For his part, Ambassador Habiballah thanked the Minister of Health for her efforts to enhance cooperation between Bahrain and China during the combat for the coronavirus pandemic, noting the successful management of the kingdom in the face of the pandemic. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 312,104 individuals had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 208,325 had taken the second dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. The Ministry of Health said that the number of coronavirus cases reached 6,185 with 640 recoveries, 653 registered new cases. 203 of the new registered cases are expatriate, 436 are contacts of active cases, and 13 are travel related. The ministry announced two deaths, a 60-year-old female expatriate and a 67-year-old female citizen from COVID-19 and expresses its heartfelt condolences to the families of the deceased and urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus. Special Envoy for Climate Affairs and Chief Executive Officer of the Supreme Council for Environment, Dr. Mohamed bin Dana, held a virtual meeting with the United States Special Presidential Envoy for Climate, John Kerry. The two sides reviewed ways to enhance cooperation and coordination between the two friendly countries in the climate field, as well as the international efforts aimed at reducing the, climate, the effects of climate change as part of the ongoing preparations for the 26th session of the Conference of the Parties COP26 of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. They also discussed climate change related opportunities and challenges in addition to alternative energy options. Dr. Bindaina lauded the U.S. return to the Prioris Climate Agreement and the tremendous effort it is exerting to step up international preparations for the U.N. Climate Change Conference COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland, affirming Bahrain's keenness to increase cooperation and exchange of expertise and information in the field of climate and environment protection in order to achieve sustainable development goals. John Kerry requested Dr. Bin Dana to convey his greetings to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He affirmed that Bahrain is a strategic ally to the United States, expressing pride in the current level of the solid level of relations between the two countries 
and stressing keenness to increase cooperation in the field of climate and environment. John Kerry called on the Kingdom of Bahrain to participate in the upcoming Leaders Climate Summit to be held in April, approaching, appreciating the ro major role played by the Kingdom through its post as Vice President of the United Nations Environment Assembly to support the international efforts aimed at reducing the repercussions of climate change. The Arab Observatory for Human Rights has reiterated its categorical rejection and strong denunciation of the void resolution issued by the European Parliament on the human rights situation in the Kingdom of Bahrain and affirmed that it represents a blatant and inadmissible interference in the internal affairs of Bahrain. The Arab Observatory called on the European Parliament to immediately halt to making itself the guardian of the human rights situation in the Arab world. The observatory stressed that the false accusations and allegations included in the aforementioned resolution reflect an absolute ignorance of the realities of the situation in the Kingdom of Bahrain, as well as a systematic and intentional targeting to distort the enormous reforms and development witnessed in Bahrain in the field of promoting human rights and respecting freedom of opinion and expression. The observatory stressed that the unacceptable vocabulary contents and lordly manner included in the aforementioned resolution represents a flagrant violation of the principles of the United Nations and all the international norms and laws that emphasize the principle of non-interference in the internal affairs of states. The Minister of Endowment Chairman of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Dr. Mohammed Mukhtar Juma, praised the efforts of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in supporting the causes of truth and justice and upholding moderation. He also praised the efforts made by His Majesty the King in making the kingdom a global center for coexistence between different religions and cultures. Juma expressed his happiness in meeting the Speaker of the Arab Parliament, Adil bin Abdul Rahman Al Assumi, appreciating the tireless efforts of the Arab Parliament headed by Al Assumi and the successes it has achieved in the recent period that are in the interest of serving the Arab region's issues. During the meeting, views were exchanged on a number of related matters, as well as discussing ways of strengthening cooperation in a manner that consolidates the values of tolerance and peace combating terrorism and extremist ideology. For his part, the President of the Arab Parliament, Adel bin Abdurrahman al-Assumi, thanked the President of the Republic of Egypt, President Abdel Fattah Sisi, for his continuous support for the work of the Arab Parliament and his interest in spreading the values of moderation, tolerance, acceptance of others and human existence.